Hello everybody, Rodaman here. Thanks for tuning in to Stellaris Wendigo's episode 17, which originally aired live on Twitch. Let's get started. Kornophoros is a very resource-rich zone. Uh, it also has Vlur in here. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. So the Mega Shipyard is now online. This is it in all of its glory. It is a shipyard that can house 20 ship constructions in parallel uh, compared to the biggest possible shipyards previously of a whopping six. So it is over three times larger than my normal shipyards. And that's the mega project that you all voted on and it is done. Uh, what is the upkeep to this bad boy? 40 energy credits a month. It's steep, but it's not terrible. Uh, the other thing is now that I have that mega shipyard, um, my old shipyard. Oh, you know, that's a good question. I don't know. So here's the question. My old shipyard has um, a fleet academy, which makes the ships that get built there better. And I don't, I'm gonna blow up the shipyard because obviously I'm, I've moved on. I now have a mega shipyard, but I'm sort of curious if it has that sort of benefit. It might not. I, I don't know. It's not something I have an answer to. All right, Jack. You have a free spot to build something. Let's build. Is there anything food related here? What about specialty resources? Uh, rare crystals? Eh, Ministry of Production will work. All right, where is my Dragon Mark One? All right, let's get him. Hey, they actually, um, they recaptured one of their territories. All right, let's jump my Juggernaut to put an end to that. Good for them, though. They're not taking it sitting down. Well, a little bit. Actually, they're taking it sitting down on something rough. Uh, so my Colossus, my Colossus actually doesn't have weapons. It can't really fight planets uh, or, or fleets. It can only fight planets, I mean. So I got to be a little careful about how I use it because it, it can't do anything on its own. It just blows up planets. It's its only purpose as dictated by the Council of Ricks. All right, so here he is, and we're gonna go to Ramsir and crack Ramsir 1. And then here is my Juggernaut uh, showing up to help reconquer Zan, because this was the homeworld of the Zanami, so I don't want to let that go. Okay, you are. Oh, I can't actually. This so this ship here cannot build a gateway because I lack the alloys. Let me fix that. To you, little guy. Oh, a guy didn't buy enough alloys. That's embarrassing. So setting up gateways all around my empire will really help me to deploy to the corners quickly. Or dang near instantly, in fact. Uh, interestingly enough, there's a 200k fleet, which is dwarfs all of my fleet significantly, but they're just watchers. This is the fallen empires that are just watching. The endgame crisis has not been revealed to me as far as I know. No. We're not there yet. So I don't, I don't know what it will be. I am eager to find out. There was a bit of an AI uprising, um, but I don't know if it's tied to the crisis. All right, Melly, the, the mothership doesn't really have anywhere to left to go. Alloy seems to be my bottleneck. Yes, I agree. Um, and I've been trying to remedy that. 
and I have a, uh, I guess, this brand new world that I haven't yet to decide what to do with, it's going to be a forge world. How's that sound? Trying to remedy my, um, my alloy problem. Now, one of the ways to solve an alloy problem would have been, not to put blame, oh, I can uh, get Galactic World uh, Wonders now. A matter decompressor would really, really help with my alloys, so we'll get the Essential Perk Galactic Wonders as my last one, and then uh, work on a matter decompressor. That would be, uh, that would that would also help to remedy the alloys. A matter decompressor like makes alloy, or makes actually minerals, doesn't it? What, what does it do? Um, I don't know why I'm blanking, it's one or the other. Yeah, the Arcology Project would have really helped out with the alloys. That's what I was gonna say. Uh, now that I am um, conquering things, what about all the, the species collection? Not that I think the benefit of that is going to be significant, but uh, none of the worlds I've conquered so far have those species, so never mind. That was a thought, but obviously it doesn't really help me. Hmm. Oh well. Alright, the matter is for... yeah, is for minerals. Thanks. I knew it was one or the other, but I forget which. Okay, are you done? Nope, you are not done. 60% uh, done cracking. And I'm trying to think of what else to do. I guess this ship could go towards Babaki next. I'm just trying to be completionist and conquer everything. Any relic worlds floating around? Uh, so let's analyze that. The best way to analyze that is probably the expansion planner. Which is the expansion planner? Here it is. So the expansion planner will show you all of the worlds that you could expand to. Um, that are just sort of free. And I don't have any relics here. I have some orbital habitats in Rayadore, but I am not going to keep Rayadore. In fact, oh no, 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 I'm keeping Rayadore. Wait, why do I have habitats here? I don't remember building a habitat. Hmm, I don't know. I think I just... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no I'm not keeping this. Downgrade. Bye bye Yeah, so that habitat was built by the Zanami or the Babaki. I'm not even sure which, but I, I since conquered it. And that's why it was uh, inhabitable. Okay, there we go. We cracked one planet now to crack the other. Ramseer is yielding 16 minerals turning humans into minerals. Okay, so all of this is conquered. Uh, let's go, let's actually jump over here and do the union map mode so I can see it better. So is, basically I'm just destroying pink at this point. Pink is the thing. Um, so Nanami and the mercantile guilds just declared peace. So I would have had to have waited up until this point if I was going to declare a normal war, a tributary war. You all voted that I do a conquering war. and But uh, now I do believe that I'm the only aggressor in this war. You know, I'm the only thing attacking anyone right now in the, in the known universe. Ooh, Surveyor finds... Some engineering research. Cue that up. So right now, both of my uh, mega mega project slots are being used as gates. I'm getting a gate on Libby Snow and a gate on Holoc, um, which is why I'm not really able to build any other projects right now. Here, let's watch this crack. Study. 
Research Ring World. Debris has been analyzed. And I constructed the terminal egress gate. So now I have a gateway that links me to the micro galaxy uh, instantly. Oh. I did it again. And now that uh, that planet doesn't look so uh, problematic. No, jump. I held shift. Jump. And crack. Come on. Here we are. Alright. Relic activate. Find more minerals. Sure. I'm just trying to do a clean, full... I didn't miss anything sweep of all of the enemy territory. Whoa, look at this, uh, look at this area. This, uh, this system has a lot of special resources here. Yeah, now it's just a question mark. A questionable question mark, if I, I do say so myself, but it's not quite as bad as it was before. All right, Millie, what are you doing? You can't really do anything, Millie, because you don't have a jump drive. That kind of bums me out. Breeding grounds. Oh, so this is the a study breeding grounds for the amoeba, interestingly enough. And we're clearing it out. Now, once I uh, finish my current gate construction projects, I'll have you guys vote on the next mega structure for me to embark on. The stupid uh, atmosphere here is, uh, there we go, making us really, really, really slow. Okay, there is a 10k armada uh, by the Sathid Union, but that's actually pretty northeast of us considerably, so that's not uh, immediate concern. What about this one? <laughs> that's not even, come on, don't even bother me with that. I've had sneezes stronger than that fleet. I like how I made this giant mega shipyard and I have not used it at all. Guess I didn't need it. All right, this ship here, this science ship, go figure out what this Wormhole leads. Oh, we already know. Oh, okay. Never mind. Is there any other wormholes I don't know where they go? No, I guess I know my wormholes. All right, travel up here and figure out what's uh, where. Where'd you go? Jump here and go to there, and we'll we'll figure out what's in this missing hole here where do I find how, how long they're usually scheduled for so you could do uptime that would work or you could go to radamot.com my name.com or uh, discord discord works too whole bunch of ways okay there we go T that like micro vassal it's gone totally totally gone don't exist anymore all right, let's keep cracking. Let's not lose steam. I don't need moon. And I don't need a more. I like this system, though. This system has a lot of special resources. Must have had like a... I don't know why it's so special. But it's nice. Right, I'm going to have the juggernaut sort of jump into the middle of uh, this territory here to cut Babaki from the insides because I don't need to do individual like zone to zone hopping. In fact, I'm going to have my other uh, fleet do the same thing. Just jump into the middle so we can, you know, work like a virus idiot from the inside. So the gateway at Holoc is done. And let's activate it. 
And this construction ship is now going to go tap the engineering research. And then the one at Libby Snow should be close to follow. I don't really have the uh, alloys to... Um, yeah, I don't really have the alloys to do a lot of construction right now. I'm aware that that is something I am lacking. But I am trying to invest into Forge World, so I'm doing my best. Whoa, a lot's going on. I'll catch up in just a sec. So let's keep rolling to the Forge Foundries. Uh, one thing that would really help is if I got Ring Worlds and started populating Ring Worlds with significant people. That would um, that would help out a lot. So this was the Architectural Renaissance. Let's reactivate that. And let's also reactivate the um, extra minerals so that I can just sell them for money for alloys, ultimately. Hey, Yoda. Hey, dude. Dude. <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, let me sleep. I'm sorry, buddy. All right, so we elevated a dozen donut. Let's get rid of this elevator. I'm going to demolish it and replace it with some forge. Exotic goods is shield boost. I don't really need to reactivate because no one's even really hurting me. Uh, but the nano -actu actuators, let's get for the extra resources, the research. All right, what are my fleets doing? My juggernaut is just sitting here. My other fleet is just sitting there. Melly is trying to catch up, but her jump drive is just dreadful bad. And you guys are way out of the fight as well. Well, they're catching up. Alright, the societal ships that you see is because I inherited an observation station at Castor here. Uh, I'm observing a... What are they? They are in late middle middle ages, the late medieval age. And I've decided to indoctrinate them instead. So there's different types of observations. Passive observation is just you build up some societal research and you don't intervene. Uh, aggressive observation um, is actually, speaking of Stargate, very much like the Gwauld, how they sort of elevate and enslave. And then indoctrination. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do aggressive observation. That's even better than indoctrination. So we'll just be very, very aggressive with that planet. Basically, you join us in the way that we demand or we scorch Earth policy. Uh, those are sort of the options there. Okay. And we are just capping territory left, right, and sideways. Uh, pretty soon, my Colossus should have Botin gone, wiped from the map. Construction venture. We're just clearing house here. Oh, there's a little bit of a fleet I missed. Melly, my mothership will go get them. They have a battleship, so they're not exactly defenseless, but they're pretty defenseless, all things considered. And this is my other Libby Snow Gate construction site. We'll activate that for all of the alloys I currently have. And mine Sucky Senpai. Because the uh, my relic found something there. Are we the bad guys? Oh, I don't know. I think it's pretty clear we're the bad guys. All right, so the matter decompressor builds at max level... Um, 100 upkeep of energy credits for 2,660 um, minerals or the Dyson Sphere, which is uh, produces power, energy, at both. Uh, we'll research Dyson Sphere. So we're researching a whole bunch of these mega projects. We have uh, the Mega Art Installation, the Ring World, and the Dyson Sphere all um, currently being researched. 
One thing I just noticed is that Obsolete Human and Akamas used to be ours. I kind of want to get that back. I don't want them to keep it. All right, hearts and minds. I had the hearts and minds, which is governing ethics extraction activated. Uh, I don't think it really changed anything about my sort of approval ratings or anything like that. So I don't, I'm not going to reactivate that. I'm going to keep my, uh, my unity as currency. Oh my god, Millie, you're so slow. Yeah, bad guy is a matter of perspective. Maybe I'm like trying to bring Ori, trying to protect the entire universe from itself by conquering it? Okay, I know how that sounds, but I don't know. A matter of perspective. Uh, there's another observation station here, and we will do aggressive observation um, as that is most fitting with our ethos. Construction oh, and Bonami or Botine or whatever it was called is gone, crushed. Poof, dust, snapped. Oh, God. So, <sighs> these little bunny rabbits, uh, they have so many little orbital stations that I have to blow up. <laughs> Why? Why? That's going to take so long to destroy. It's so annoying. Oh, well. Just the way it is, I suppose. I let them expand and scurry about like nimbly bimbly little rabbits and now I have to suffer the consequences of dealing with the the massive fallout of having, you know, enemies have far flung territories everywhere. Oh well, woe is me. It's my An fault. Federation has gathered. Uh so a mutual assistance assembly. This is a new federation. Let me figure out who's in it. Often what ends up happening is when there is a dominant force in the galaxy, you'll have a lot of enemy... A lot of enemies will converge into one big federation to try to protect themselves from you. It's not going to work, but that's what they're trying to do. Cute. Not going to work. As you can see, this is what the battles look like. They're one-sided and I make them disappear quickly. Uh-oh. Implant malfunctions on Caster? Oh, yeah, because we're... Okay, yep, that makes sense. Uh, where's that scientist again? Day sleeper? Here we go. Let's get you over there. Uh, so... Part of, part of the issues, if you're wondering with that, is the aggressive observation. We were implanting them with, like, sensors or whatever, and it uh, sort of backfired, and uh, we have to clean up our mess. Eh. The price. The price of uh, aggressive observation. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, their federation is definitely like huddle masses mentality. Absolutely. That's a good way of putting it. So they're cl clamoring to be protected by one another, which is a big old joke because I uh, punched them all combined minus the uh, fallen empires. The fallen empires still could take me on. Absolutely. They would, they would probably give me a pretty harsh thrashing, but they're not going to wake up just yet. It's a little early for that. So if you're wondering, uh, for those that are new, the Fallen Empires is a concept where, um, like here's a Fallen Empire, the Rolic Watchers. Uh, they were holy guardians, so they were very spiritualistic. They ascended to a point where they were unbelievably powerful, and then sort of went stagnant. And that's all that happens. They lie sort of waiting and watching um 
they are very, very, very powerful. You can, towards late game, defeat them. Uh, but they're, it's dangerous to fight them early on because they will crush you so very quickly. And here's the other Fallen Empire, Enigmatic Observations, uh, Observers. They're sort of like scientists. So we have uh, science and religion um, sitting here. Uh, yeah. Okay, so the caster implants have been fixed. Uh, let's go back to Rimder and figure out what's up here. Because I forgot to do that. Looks like uh, my food is not so good. So I'll have to keep that in check. I've been retooling a lot of my food worlds to instead uh, make alloys, and I went a little bit too far, it seems, and now my planets cannot feed themselves as well. Well, okay. just taking a look at what I can do. There's not a whole lot I can do about this, actually. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's not going to be a problem for quite some time, but uh, I might need to colonize a new planet to be a breadbasket world. I might need to terraform them, actually. Or I'll terraform uh, these worlds here. Now, I'm natively Arctic, so I'm terraforming them to Arctic so that I can colonize them myself. Um, oh, man. Clearing this stupid colony is going to take forever. There's so many stupid little orbital world things. It's gross. Why'd you have to go and do that? Just populate everywhere. A study has been completed. All right, research. So ring worlds, I just have unlocked. That's awesome. Uh, let's get some low-hanging fruit research that I've left behind. And my fleets are just stomping. As you, if I zoom out, you can see the pink that's left here are inhabited worlds, which are waiting as holdouts. I can't conquer them until the inhabited worlds are gone. But as, as you can see, the ever-decreasing amount of um, pink territory is an indicator of how this war is going for my enemies poorly. Now, there is this the island up here that I haven't gotten to because they're physically separated out. So that's been um, somewhat of a protection for them up until now. But soon I'm going to run out of territory to thwomp and be jumping, um, skipping with my jump drives up towards them to their inevitable uh, executions. Yes, indeed. So I'm skipping my main two fleets up there and then having Melly. Melly's actually doubling back and conquering some territory that I've overlooked. And then my Juggernaut, uh, Glitch BB in the Evil Lucky uh, fleet are just cleaning up the remainder of whatever's left of the Babaki. So, functionally speaking, the Zanami are all but conquered and the Pavaki are basically all but conquered. There's really not much left of them that exists. Now, I'm sort of marooned here until my jump drives um, cool down because Ushakaron all of the bordering empires have their borders closed to me, so I can't really go anywhere. So do the uh, ancient civilizations there have any funky tech? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they'll have, uh, like, normally for shields and armor and stuff like that and energy production, it goes from tier one to tier five. Um, it's possible to get tier six. It doesn't always happen but it, it's hypothetically possible to go up to, like, tier 6. Uh, but you also get that by de destroying Leviathans. Uh, the 
Enigmatic Fortress or the um, the Dragon, whatever it's called, uh, they also have like tier five and or tier six gear that you can learn from defeating them. All right, I'm just uh, what, what I'm doing now is just getting sort of the low hanging fruit tech stuff that's really quick for me to get, just to get it out of the way once and for all. Oh, this battle's so weird. Just my massive uh, juggernaut. Juggernaut's got a juggernaut. Hey, hydrate. All right. J Ropa. Cheers. All right, my science ship is ready to make the jump into this unknown sector. And I'm waiting for Epic Marcus and Dragoron to have their jump drives cooled down so I can start um, ripping up Sathid Union. So, so far as I can tell, this is just a pocket. M I don't actually know what was here. I don't know why it's an un... Oh, you know what? I know why. The Raltech Watchers um, acted as a shield so that nobody could get back here. So this is unexplored entirely, which is really rare at this light in the game. Because if you look at the hyperlanes, uh, these, uh, what is it, six systems don't connect to anything but Nekar here. And uh, no one can travel through there because they have their borders closed. But because I can jump, uh, I don't have to follow sort of the hyperlanes. So that's pretty cool. I'm, in other words, discovering things that nobody has discovered before. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it's not that exciting, but... Virgin territory is pretty strange to find this late in the game. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Dragon, marked one, is doing a good job. Smushing all their happy little uh, strongholds. And we'll just keep going. Evil Lucky is conquering the last of their territory. Epic Marcus finally can jump. Let's jump. Why isn't it let me jump? There we go. And Dragoron probably can jump too. There we go. So now we're jumping into their territory and we're gonna wreak some serious havoc. I almost feel bad. All this jumping, I'm gonna get a crisis. Yeah, I'm gonna get the uh, like rift open crisis. Uh, Eben Rodney, thanks for the uh, resub. <laughs> You're the angel, not me. Thank you so very much. All right, so we are in their territory now, just destroying everything in sight. My juggernaut is just making sure that this, this world actually got reclaimed again, uh, so he's locking it down. Uh, gateway at Holoc is just constructed. So now I have a, um, I have a pretty robust gateway network at this point. This one's going to be done in 169 days. So I have a Holic gateway, soon to be a Libby gateway, a Wendigo gateway. Uh, what I need is to decide how far south my territory is going to go. Because everything that I don't want, I'm going to try to gift. It's going to take probably forever and a half, but I'm going to gift out to my vassals. Because I actually just don't want it. I don't want to control territory other than what I started with. I'm just here to kill. I'll rip and tear until the job is done. Oh, so they do have a little fleet that's reclaiming territory. That's cute. Let's go chase them down. All right, we just got the Dyson Sphere researched. Let's go with the Matter Decompressor. And then once I have all of the mega structures researched, I'll have you all vote on um, the next one I build. I don't have a lot of alloy for that, but uh, I'm working on it. Let me do a quick survey of my planets to see how I might be able to help them. All of these exotic gas refineries is totally unnecessary now. I actually have a surplus of exotic gas, so let me switch these over to alloy. 
I don't know why I have all that exotic gas. I needed it at some point, but I don't need it now. Not even close. Alright. Some other stronghold just got blown up. So many planets down there. A study has been completed. Now at this point, I'm just trying to get all of the research tree done, like completely. Um, so I'm, I'm researching a ton of research that I don't need. I'll be completely blunt and honest. It's not research I will ever, ever, ever put to use or use. It's just like, I like to just be completionist and say, yeah, I got all the research, like literally everything. So that's what I'm doing now with all the, the quick uh, research I skipped over in the past to complete the tree. Like if I was playing Civilization and, you know, I had tanks rolling around and like archers as well. You know, sometimes it's best to upgrade those archers, even if you don't need them. Oh, I just met the Caravaneers for the first time. Uh, sure, I will let you add energy to some system. Oh, you added it to Gorum. I'm not keeping Gorum. Oh well. So we suppressed their insurrection down here at Lambidus. Uh, they had a bit of a force trying to reconquer stuff, and, well, that didn't go very well. Over here is the... Uh, these are the Marauders. So I don't actually need to conquer the Marauders right now. I know they're hostile to me, but they're not going to spread, and they're not fighting back. Uh, I'm just focusing on the people I'm at war with. And as you can see right now... Um, I could settle status quo. Status quo would be basically all who are conquered remain conquered. But I would prefer just to keep conquering. That's the type of person I am, apparently. Just kill, kill, kill. But there's really not much. If I go to the diplomatic mode, uh, red is my enemy. So there's really not much left. Ooh, they took Se Sucky Senpai. Oh, you bastards. That's not going to be loud. I don't know how they got it, but I'll send the mothership to go deal with that in a minute. They must have had like a little fleet to do a uh, backstabbing nonsensey thing. They're not going to be able to keep it though, so I'm not that worried. They don't really have any forces to uh, to keep or defend it. All right, we are almost done with all of the research that I've skipped over and we're into the end game research. Now in the end game of Stellaris, you'll have, so that there's always something to research, you have options that are just like, um, how to explain? They are sort of, I'm at a loss for words to explain it. Uh, all it really gives you is like, a little boost, like a 5% boost to something that is repeatable. They're infinitely repeatable, basically research projects that you never really have to be done with. So we, that way there's always something, but they're very expensive to do and they uh, become incrementally more expensive. So the idea is that it gives you something to research, even if the game carries on for like a long, 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 long time. Um, and we're almost to the point where all of my research options are just that. Those sort of pseudo-infinitely researchable um, uh, projects. Oh, is this actually mine? No, I don't care about this. Who am I at war with still? I'm at war with Zanami, Sathid, and Babaki. Uh, the Tizru are gone. I exterminated them. They were situated uh, here at T, and they're they're poofed. And there's an, a Sathid assault flotilla in my um, vassals, my tributaries' territory, which is probably what took Seki Senpai. Uh, so if I wanted to do damage to that.
Um, this fleet here is sort of done. I'm trying to think of what I can do. Where? Oh, so my scientist is still researching and surveying. That's fine. Um, I have a lot of ships that just don't have things that tasks currently. So this fleet, I guess, I'll send back to Libby Snow. Or back home. What is the fastest way to get there? I don't, I'm not really sure. All right, so finally, Babaka is exterminated. And unfortunately for me, the next town over is full of the same sort of orbital structure crap. I bet, yeah, and over here too. So it's gonna take me a long, long, long time to get rid of this purple here, because there's a lot of uh, holdouts that need extermination. Uh, the survey at Rexalia. I'm not actually going to keep that territory, so I don't care. Uh, but view. They have a um, they have a fleet that's conquering stuff. So now my fleet all of a sudden has a task. Let's just jump in. So when you jump drive, you your ship damage goes to like 50%, and your sublight, which is traveling around, goes down to 50%. Uh, so you do weaken your fleet significantly when you jump around, but I'm so much stronger than their fleets that it doesn't really matter if I jump. But against against a real enemy, it would be a problem. But these aren't real enemies. They're pushovers. So Melly is reclaiming the territory I lost. She just reclaimed it. And then the mothership is going to go conquer that little fleet that's kind of pestering me. Epic Marcus, you're going to stay there until your jump drives are cooled. And Dragoron is conquering the last of the Sathid territory. So if we zoom it out here... Oh, no. Actually, there's a, there's a fair bit of Sathid territory left. I apologize. I didn't see it till just now because it was pocketed. This here's a fleet of theirs. There's a, this is a pocket of Sathid. I don't, I don't know. There's some serious border gore is all I'm gonna say. It's a very, very serious border gore. Study I'm making you want to root for the underdogs. Well, early on in the game, everybody was at war with me and everyone was beating me up. So I'm not saying I'm the underdog anymore, but early on, I was really the underdog because everybody was invading me and, and trying to kill me. It was kind of fun. But now I'm just like God tier. It's like one punch man just punching away. Hey, look at that. So they, uh, they, they have a fleet that retook some territory. I'm gonna jump my um, my juggernaut in and ruin their day, but see, they they still they're still putting up a little bit of a fight, marginally, sort of barely. An anomaly has been discovered. All right, juggernaut, how are you faring? And they killed everything. Cool. Yes, this was the playthrough I was severely penned in. Um, that is obviously not the case anymore. Dragron has to wait until I can jump to Seal. Seal is the last little holdout that I haven't yet conquered. And Dragron is clearing out the Prism Sapphire Lurkers in this sort of... Um, separated and protected microverse. So here's a perfect example of the repeating research that I was talking about. Um, for about 60K research, which takes me 33 months each, I can pick any of these. Kinetic weapons, explosive weapons, strike craft, defensive platform, planetary build speed, or strike craft damage. I'm gonna do strike craft damage. Um, and it's just diminishing returns. Basically the research gets harder and harder and harder to do as you proceed and it's a it's something for you to always be able to uh, to invest in. 
I guess. All right. We are two more worlds away from conquering burritos. Makes me want Mexican food for some reason. And my juggernaut finally tamped down on the little insurrection over here. But as you can see, there's fleets that have flown the coop and are trying to reconquer around Hippie Shake and Jim Bob. And I will not allow that. No one conquers my Jim Bob. Only, only Jim Bob. Am I uh, sending researchers to pick over the wreck wreckage? No, not really, because my tech is so much higher tier than all their tech that there's nothing to be gained other than some basic research. And for the micromanaging that that would require, it wouldn't net me enough. Like it's, it's not worth enough to bother. So here's a really good example. This construction ship is going to use the gate system to get to terminal egress. So as you can see, I can jump from my home world uh, straight to the terminal, which is very cool. Yeah, it would be it would be a tiny amount of research um, where I make about a thousand research a month, and it would be like a tenth of my total research I make a month for my scientists to go well out of their way to do it. A study is again, like I said, just like not worth it. Ultimately, just not worth it. In my opinion, you're absolutely welcome to disagree. Okay. So Seal, we're jumping to Seal, uh, which is the last holdout of the Sathid Union. And then functionally they are defeated. They keep actually spawning ships. I don't even know where these ships are coming from. It, it's actually really a confusing problem that I have. I mean, I'm not gonna lose or anything, but I don't know, I don't, they just keep, I, I conquer, it's very, very strange. I conquer their shipyard and then somehow it makes ships. I don't know what's going on. Being perfectly honest, but uh, Epic Marcus is almost finished up um, killing what he's killing over here, and then he'll be able to come back and squish the the little uprisings. Because as you can see, I am losing some territory here. No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be their queue, because um, when you when you control their shipyard, their shipyard goes inactive. Right, it's not supposed to. Uh, it's not supposed to a study has been manufacture anything. They've lost it. So I really don't know. It doesn't matter. It's annoying, but it's not. Uh, it's not gonna get me defeated or anything. Whoa! Someone died. All Mother Igpron died at the age of 259. So we are now without a ruler. And we're going to have an election about who becomes ruler in a moment. All right, Epic Marcus, let's jump and jump straight into the world that is manufacturing ships as a, hey, guess what? You lose. You lose. Good day, sir. And Dragoron will be joining them shortly once his jump drives can allow for travel. Evil Lucky is doing what he can a as a solo ship thing. juggernaut to clean up this mess. Uh, but it, it does take some time. Right, Dragoron, how many more days? 60? Okay. Sepit Marcus is here at Lombidius. I didn't mean to extend my, um, I extended one of the deals that I didn't mean to. Oh, well. Mr. Tusky should be ruler. Uh, we have an election. So it's between Day Sleeper, Latin Deer, Fabron, who, yeah, and Baug. I'm actually going to elect Day Sleeper because the other ones play important roles and they're the youngest. So I'm going to rig the election and Day Sleeper, you are now 
Yeah, you're now it. You're the head honcho. Let's find a replacement scientist. Here we are. Perfect. And this scientist named Munnan is going to need a name. So, uh, four minutes. Five to the top of the hour. 55 past the hour, however you want to look at it. That is when I'm going to raffle our new scientist who is surveying and researching and the like. Okay. So now Burritos is fully destroyed. We've cracked all worlds there and we can downgrade that station. As you can see, all the orbital stations are gone. And the orbital stations don't leave uh, debris on like a planet when you crack planets. They they leave debris or whatever. Orbital stations just go poof. All right, dozen donut. Let's get another alloy. Alloy, alloy, alloy. I'm gonna replace this with agriculture and turn this world into a micro agriculture world because we need it and then replace this exotic gas refinery with a food processing facility that should fix our uh, our food deficit issues Alright, Dragoron, I haven't checked in a while, but definitely could jump. So let's get him to jump towards home. It's going to need to be two jumps, so it's going to take a while to get back. One jump and then another to bridge this gap. Alright, Epic Marcus is trying to clean up this stupid fleet's captured stuff. Oh good, this fleet is like riding towards me, what a dummy. Uh, Melly, what are you doing? Melly is trying to clean up some stuff too at Kornagi. And Evil Luck, Lucky, is doing the same thing up here. A study has been completed. All right. So, this is what this battle looks like just. Oof. They're like weeds, and I'm just stomping in a bunch of weeds. A system survey has concluded. All right, so that survey's done. Let's go research the anomalies. Actually, let's survey this last system and then research the anomalies. And clear out all this news. Most of this news is just garbage. It's not stuff that you ever really need to pay attention to because it's not really all that important. All right, Epic Marcus, you are gonna jump to the world that rebelled or whatever that got under a thumb. Melly, you are travel so slow, it's painful. I got did I ever get the specimen samples collected not yet I do plan on it but uh, I'm just not there yet I will be once this gets wrapped up once uh, this scientist who will be named right now actually Boop. Moro you live again Moro you live again once Moro finishes uh, doing science up here. It, the rewards for that uh, specimen capture thing is so paltry and terrible compared to how wealthy I am that it, it doesn't really matter. It's one of those like nice flavor type, but it really doesn't matter. But it's one of those like I want to do it just to say I did it. Mo causes more trouble in a new realm. Yeah, that about sums that up. 
All right, Dragon is wiping out these planets. It's too bad I can't just be like, uh, scientists can like auto survey. It's too bad I can't just tell um, uh, my Colossus to auto crack worlds. It's pretty much what I want him to do. All right, Dragon should be free to skip. You like how I called it skip? I know it's wrong, but I like to be wrong sometimes. All right, jump drives, engage. Epic Marcus. You head down to Ryadori. And I think the... Yeah, they're pretty much uh, all reclaimed. If you look at the globe now, I was... You remember how big green was when I began? Look at how much they've disappeared. There's little pockets that I still need to snuff out life in. But, oh my god, goodness. We just... Making our enemies disappear. Wife delivered me some, uh, some tea, so I had to finish the beer quickly. Okay, I'm gonna speed it up to fastest speed so that I can blow these things up quicker. So I don't need to take my time with that. And then once this war is over, I'm gonna retool my fleets to be carrier Assistant fleets, has as concluded. was requested. I like this song. Should I crank it? Rising unemployment and jacking crime. Um, all right, increase benefits, and let me take a look at what I can do. So there's a bunch of workers that are unemployed here. Uh, I'm going to move them off planet. So I'm going to resettle them on Fen Venice, because I have tons and tons of jobs on Fen. The problem is, if you analyze this, um, I have a bunch of jobs, but they're all specialist jobs that are too high for the the slave population that are here. So these are going over to Fen. And one, two, three, four, five. Or no, three. Nope, let's ruined is fine. Alright, so now Fen just all of a sudden had a huge influx. Actually, it might have put too many over. No, they should be alright. I think I actually need to ascend some population. I guess I'll do that. Um, what world should I send them? Doesn't own it. I'm gonna send them at your world. So you will make, you will elevate them. All right. So you don't understand how pops get destroyed by by pop move. Let me uh, let me lower the music so I can explain. Um, so the way that works is if you take a look at the world, once this is what got destroyed. So the reason was in order to have this slot unlocked, I need 50 people here. So I moved nine people off of this planet, dropped the population from like 51 to 42 and lost the building slot. Basically, there wasn't enough population to keep it to keep the, the world, um, you know, it, it, it essentially abandons the facility. Um, so that's what happens, you know, with that. I hope that makes more sense. So yeah, you do got to be careful about like moving too many people too quickly or you'll end up with a pop loss or a structure loss. But I wanted to do it anyway because... It was important for me to do. I think at this point, all of my fleets can go back to my mega, um, mega shipyard. Can I rename this mega shipyard? No, I can't. Okay. Boring. 
Yeah, it wasn't excess pop, it was just unemployed population. So the issue at hand, the core issue, is that I have a two-tiered system because we're Necroids. So when you're playing Necroids, you have your leadership tier, which can hold specialists and leader jobs, and then you have your worker tier that are restricted to only the lowest class jobs. So if you take a look at the population here, you have rulers, specialists, and workers. And on a lot of my planets, I actually have too few specialists and too many workers. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting up, um, oddly enough, it doesn't donut, I don't. I have, uh, I have six jobs open. So um, what I can do is I can go to Varius here and move the unemployed population from Valrius over to Dozen Donut, and they will be immediately employed as clerks. And then I can do the same thing at uh, Fen Habanis. Do that, move them over to Dozen Donut. One, two, three. And they're immediately employed as clerks. This is like the micromanagement of your, um, your workforce you know, to try to reduce unemployment. Because what ends up happening if you have too many people unemployed is you'll get uh, criminals. They'll basically turn to crime and that will be a problem. So Wendigo Prime has, no, actually Volga. Volga has four unemployed workers, but um, this world can take four more. So if I move this population from Volga to Varius Doom, let's do that, Volga to Varius Doom, I will have no unemployment anywhere in the galaxy. I've employed everyone. Although a lot of them are like slaves doing slave labor. And I'm not exactly proud of that, but hey, you know, they're employed. So, so yeah. How in the name of Wendigos did you miss me streaming for three hours? Oh, someone needs to sign up for the Twitch announcements on Discord. <laughs> not to call you out or anything, but. If you sign up for the Twitch announcements, anytime I ever go live on Twitch, I will announce to at Twitch, so you'll never ever miss it. All right, let's turn this down. So yeah, I just, I just finished. Oh, so here's a perfect example where um, on Varias Prime, I have. Okay, so my. I'm trying to figure out exactly what's going on. My, I have one too many rulers here. Do I have any place that I don't have enough rulers? No, I need more ruler jobs, it seems like. But at Valrias Prime, I have an unemployed worker, and at Valrias Doom, I have a free slot for them. But then that will be the last free slot for unemployed that I currently have. So I need to make more like low class jobs. And what I need to do is I need to start elevating my population in the chamber of elevation to become specialists and rulers. Thank you all for watching episode 17 of Stellaris Wendigos, which originally aired live on Twitch. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule, links to Twitch and Discord. If you have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so very much for watching. I'll catch you next episode. Farewell.